title of the message today is Help On It. Say that with me. One more time. Why should you stay with it as a believer? Why should I not get discouraged? Why should I keep my faith? Because, see, Jesus ain't going to come back. He's at the right hand of God the Father. One day He will come and receive His children. I, I believe that. Okay? However, right now is our time. We're here to preach the gospel. We're here to love people. We're here to be His hands, His feet, and quite frankly, His, uh, his voice and His mouth. Amen. So, He needs our help. That's a big reason. That's a big reason for you not to let your faith get ship, shipwrecked. Amen. Yes or no? See, it ain't just about you. There's other people out here that need you. Amen. Say, how many hard times in your life, some serious hard times in your life, and it was just the family. You had that family, and you had to stay going for that family. Can I see your hand? See? See this world as your family. See Inglewood, Florida, and this greater community of where it's Port Charlotte or Gulf Cove or the old village down here in Inglewood, whatever. Why don't you see this town as your family? They need you. Yeah, but I've had this, and I've had that. Yeah, but you know what? They don't have Jesus, perhaps. They need you. Help wanted. And so the old pastor's telling the young man, Son, we need you. Y'all listening or not? Okay, keep going. Let's go with it. Now, Jesus did what he said he would do. See, it ain't about Jesus not doing what he said. It's about you and me not doing what we say. The Son of Man must suffer many things. He did. Be rejected of the elders and the chief priests and scribes. He was and be slain. He was and he would be raised the third day. And he was and he did. Amen? So he did what he said he was going to do. And he said to all of them, say it with me, if any will what? Come after who? Let him deny who? And take up his what? And follow who? Jesus Christ is saying to you today, you don't understand, Pastor. I'm a bad person. You don't understand. Now, this has happened in my life. Jesus Christ is saying to you today, I need you. I did what I said I was going to do. Yeah, but you know, sister, so and so, or my wife did this, my husband did it, my kids did it. Guys, all of that's painful. So what does that mean? You just quit on God? Are you kidding me? No. I need your help, Jesus says. I've been saying this for the last several months at Fellowship when I meet somebody new and you've come to our church and I get a chance to meet you. I say this to you. I want you. I want you as a part of our church. Why wouldn't I? We're not running a club here, are we? Say, I'm not looking for a certain type. If you, if you make X number of dollars, you can give this much money to the church. That's not a priority or criteria for Gary Clark. Did you hear me? Yes or no? You matter whether you got nothing, you got lots. You understand? I want you here. Jesus Christ was saying, I need you. The Apostle Paul is going to tell Timothy, I need your help, son. Don't you quit. Jesus Christ is calling for leaders, men and women, young and old. That's what he wants. But, so he's saying, help wanted, help wanted. You know, I'm young, what can I do? I'm old, what can I do? You can do a lot. Don't forget the most important thing is not so much what goes on inside this room as much as what goes on out there. Y'all hear me or not? Being a good neighbor, loving people, smiling at people. When your feelings are about to get hurt, you can be kind. Did you know you can do that, yes or no? Yeah, you can do that. So what? Come on, you don't have to give everybody the finger. Excuse me. Are you hearing me? Say. Y'all listening or not? You don't have to give everybody a piece of your mind. Jesus was reviled, but he reviled not again. Is that what the Bible says? Is that what it says? He was led like a sheep to the what? To the slaughter. Okay? The point is, he needs us. Paul was saying, I need you, son. I've started something down here. Paul was saying, obviously it was Jesus, but I've planted all these churches all over. And one of the main ones was a church at Ephesus. And son, I need you there. Don't quit. Keep looking. To build my church, to build my body. Amen. We're trying to get somewhere. Not a what? We are building a building. But Fellowship Church is not a building. It might seem like that sometimes. Because, man, we just keep building this building. Will the building ever end? Tell me about it. But I'm blessed. I can honestly say, 
I go out there, I love the way the building looks, but does the building matter more to me than the average person? No! I don't go out there and look, oh, look, the big building, the beautiful building. I care more about a person than I care about that building. You hearing me? I could preach in a barn. The biggest thing I've been struggling with the last several months is my back and my pain. But also, Gary Clark, why did you do this crazy thing? You could preach out in a barn, boy. Amen? Well, I guess the, the, the reason is people. Amen? Say, about reaching people. And when I think that way, then I get excited about it. Y'all listening or not? Probably lost you already. <laughs> Help wanted. You must know it will be difficult. It'll be difficult to follow Christ and to stay with Him. I can attest to that. You will be what? Woohoo! People don't even know me and say bad things about me. That's okay. And then when they know me, they say even more bad things about me. It's terrible. You will face a constant attack from an, a what? An invisible enemy. So here's the, here's the help wanted ad. Jesus put it in the paper. Here we go. <laughs> not too many people are going to apply for this job. Okay? You may not see the results of your what? Till you get on the other side. How many you are not bragging, but you think when you get to the other side, there might be something waiting on the other side for you? Some rewards and some things. You don't think about it a lot, but you think something's over there. Yeah. It's going to rain. And I drove my Jeep. Yeah, I knew that was a bad thing. <laughs> Top down. That's okay. I don't care. Let's just get washed. That's right. Free wash. Your full reward will not come until after you're what? Dead. You must know it may cost you your what? Ooh. Your personal what? Or even your what? Yeah. Serving the Lord. We're not talking about just like a full-time pastor like Gary Clark. No. You. Us working together. Help wanted. Jesus did what He said He was going to do. But I'm going to tell you something. It will cost you what? It's going to cost you something to serve the Lord. It's going to cost you something. So that's why this book of 1 Timothy is important. I need your help, but people are what? People are worth it. People are worth it. Without you, they'll be what? Lost. They will go where? See, but to make ourselves feel better, we say the Bible is not true about that part. See, because people, God's a good God. You really won't send people to hell. But if hell is true, and it is, then I guess it's on you and me to work and to serve and to share the gospel. Are y'all hearing me, yes or no? You can't wish hell away. Okay? It's there. And people will go there, but that does not have to what? Happen. Thank God for a man named Eddie Zimmerman was preaching at a little church called Temple Baptist Church in Rockingham, North Carolina. You want to talk about a depressed area. John, you've been. That little church. A lot littler though in those days. First time I walked there with my drunk mama. But there was that faithful pastor. Had no schooling on how to be a preacher. Hello, we're fine. We're right here. No, I didn't. He likes this message. Yeah, yeah. The Lord likes this message, but the prince of the power of the air doesn't probably, right? But I'm glad for a faithful man. Are y'all listening? In a little country church where the, my mother and I, we could hear the gospel and be saved. And I got saved from a devil's hell. I did. And over years, I've been able to see other people come to Christ. It's a beautiful thing, serving the Lord. How are we doing, Raj? Not good? Waiting for the projector, brothers. Okay. How you doing? I'm doing good. Welcome back. It's probably going to happen a few times. This is good practice for us. we got the same kind of lights at the facility we're building. Amen? Come on. Look at that. That's the name of our projector in focus. Look at that. Let's go, Raj, quick. I got to go fast. Today I'm going to begin a new message called, here we go, 
Encouragement from the old pastor. That's what we've been talking about. But let's go now. Raj, I'm trying, brother. That beach done slowed you down. It's going to be the book of 1 Timothy. We've already talked about that. Timothy was a young man who responded to Jesus Christ's call for who? Leaders. Keep going. Let's learn about him. Who was Timothy? We're going to do it for several weeks, so you need to know this. He was born into a mixed family. His father was Greek and his mother was a Jew. Then he came to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish and believed, but his father was a what? So he came from a mixed background. You might think that's no big deal now. Probably a big deal back in the day. Okay? Probably the Jewish folk didn't appreciate it quite as much. Okay? Here we go. He had religious upbringing. Timothy, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that's in you, which first dwelt in your what? Grandmother Lois, also in your mother who? And I'm persuaded it's in you too. So he had some kind of good godly foundation and a heritage. Did you know you can have a good foundation and a heritage and quit on God? Did you know that, yes or no? You can't blame your mom and your daddy. You're listening to me say. See, it's on you. Take responsibility for serving the Lord. That's what we're talking about today. He was probably led to Christ by the Apostle Paul. Unto Timothy, say it with me, my own what? doesn't mean that he was led to, by, to Christ by Paul, but certainly he had a huge influence in his life. The person that did that for me was not Eddie Zimmerman that helped bring me to Christ back at Temple Baptist Church in Rockingham. The man who what I would call as my father in the faith would have been Pastor Wally Metz. That's the man of faith in my life that trained me for so many years. I worked with him. I loved him. He loved me. He was patient with me. He taught me how to give the scriptures, and uh, it was beautiful. He taught me how to love people. taught me how to be real. That's hard for a preacher. So I had that kind of person in my life. So, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Keep going. He was circumcised by the Apostle Paul. I'm glad I don't have to do that to folk. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do it. Nope, I'd quit. <laughs> Sorry. Him would Paul have to go forth with him and took him and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in the quarters. I mean, he actually, Tim, Timothy was willing to be circumcised because he was going to be going in the ministry trying to reach Jewish people. He didn't have to be circumcised, but Paul said it's probably going to help you reach other people. I'd be like, can't we move? You know what I'm saying? He was chosen for ministry leadership. This young man was chosen. Neglect not the what? That's in you, which was given you by prophecy with the laying hands of the presbytery or ministers or faithful men of God saw this in you. So he's thinking about quitting. He's struggling. He's discouraged. Do you feel it or not? I haven't got there a whole lot yet, but... He was a faithful servant of the Lord. For this cause I've sent you Timotheus, who is my beloved what? And faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you in remembrance of my ways, uh, which be in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. So he was, in a way, Paul's right-hand man for a while. Very faithful, very dependable. So you can be a dependable person and still have your faith shipwrecked. Are y'all listening? It's not just losers that quit. It's not just losers that turn and run. No! Good people. And Jesus is saying, and Paul's saying, stay with it, man. He had a passion for people. This is big. But I trust in the Lord Jesus and Timotheus shortly unto you that I also may uh, that I also may be of good comfort when I know of your state. For I have no man, what? Like minded who will naturally care for your state, for all seek their own, not the things which are. Jesus Christ, but you know the proof of who? Timothy. That as a son with the Father, he served me with the gospel. So he could count on Timothy to go to other places and represent him because he knew he had a passion for people. Are y'all listening? I don't know if you're getting the message so far. It's quite involved. Help wanted. This is a good man. I'm just saying a lot of people are whiners. Say whiners. And you hire a whiner, let me say something. You hire a whiner, don't be surprised if when he works for you, then he's going to what? But not every 
everybody you hire is a whiner. Sometimes they're good people. You see what I'm saying? They're good people. They're hard workers, and things can happen. People can get discouraged. They start whining. They start complaining. Things happen. The point is, see, Timothy was not a whiner. He was not a quitter. He must have really, 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 really been discouraged. And see, good people can get that way, guys. Don't quit on him. Keep serving the Lord. That's what the Bible is talking to us here about. He pastored the church at Ephesus, which the Apostle Paul established. And when you read, how many just love the book of Ephesians? You love the book of Ephesians. Just a blessing to you. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Oh, you know, so many uh, beautiful scriptures in the, out of the book of Ephesians. He was a pastor of this church. So in spite of his upbringing, Timothy, in spite of his upbringing, in spite of his conversion with the Apostle Paul, in spite of his spiritual gifting, his close relationship with Paul and association, his being a pastor of a great church. Keep going. Timothy was what? So you say that again with me. Timothy was what? You know what? And I have a personality. I know my personality's out there. I do love people. I care for people. I'm, I got lots of energy, people tell me. But you know what? I can relate to this guy. How many know that about me? See? Look at you. You know, don't you? <laughs> I can relate to him. I get discouraged. You know? That's why don't put your confidence in me. I'll say that. <laughs> People say number one thing about me is, Clark, you're real. I like you because you're real. I try to keep it real so you won't be disappointed in me. Letting you down. Because I get discouraged. Are y'all hearing me or not today? Yeah, so boy, when I come across this, boy, this hits home with me. Perhaps because of physical problems, maybe he was that way. Well, I can even relate to that. What's that like? People that have back problems, they're some of the worst problems on the planet back. I'm not trying to whine on stage today, but buddy, when your back is screwed up, you're messed up. Is that right? Come on. I mean, you can just have a little back pain and think the world's going to end, some of you. You know what I mean? So I can relate. Here's Paul trying to help Timothy. He's writing to him, don't drink water, but use a little what? <laughs> I can't tell you the number of things people have told me about some of the problems in my life. I, I'm, I'm glad I didn't take some of their advice, okay? Come on, yeah. So obviously he had some kind of infirmity or something, or maybe he was just so discouraged, Paul said, just get something to drink. I know y'all know that I personally don't drink. I don't drink at all. My mother was an alcoholic. So was my stepdad who shot my mother, murdered her in cold blood. So I don't do alcohol, period. My life is not a good example of, of good things about alcohol. So I don't do that. But, but I tell you what, <laughs> I mean, uh, if, I, if I did, I would. Amen? Come on. <laughs> it's a good thing. Amen? I think some of us don't do certain things because the Lord knows us. <laughs> Clark would really be messed up. Here we go. Come on. Certainly because of people problems. He was discouraged because maybe sickness, because of people problems. Let no man despise your what? Boy, that word despise is strong, isn't it? It sounds like people in his church despised him. If you despise me, it ain't going to work out too well for you. I'm just going to let you know because I'm going to keep plugging. Amen. Are y'all listening? Say. Despise is a strong word. Boy, I just don't even like that word. Do you say? Ugh. But be an example of the believers in word, conversation, charity, spirit, faith, purity. So because of people problems, he was discouraged. How many ever got discouraged because of some person? <laughs> hey, how many ever stopped going to church for a period of time because of a person? Can I see your hand? Look at those hands in this room that went up. Can you believe it? Yeah. 
More people probably stopped going to church because of people than they did the bottle. Amen? You hear me? Come on. So Paul's talking to him. Help wanted. Now, how can you stay steady? Now, I, I don't have much time. We're going to probably have to pick it up next week. But we'll be all right. We'll do it. Let's, let's work on this in just a couple of minutes. Teach and believe sound doctrine. How can you... I mean, what Christ wants out of you, this idea of message of help wanted, we need help with people to teach sound doctrine. Y'all listening or not? We need help with people to teach sound doctrine. There's so much goofy on TV and in churches. They're crazy. Are y'all hearing me? Yes or no? It ain't in the Bible. Yo-yo-ville. As I besought you to abide at Ephesus when I went to Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other what? Doctrine. Neither give heed to what? You want to be strong, son? You want to stay with it? This is what you need to do, and this is what I need you to do. You don't give heed to fables and in this genealogy. I don't care who their mother was. Which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. Teach sound doctrine. Edify the brethren and sisters in the Scriptures. Teach truth, man. Now the end of the commandment is what? Or love, love out of a pure heart. Teach pure doctrine. Love people. Don't let church become its own thing. Remember people, man. Not the building fund. Are y'all hearing me? Come on. And of a good conscience, of faith unfeigned, from which some having what? That's, a, that's another word that you don't see much in the Bible. Swerved. <laughs> Have turned aside unto another word you don't hear much anymore. Vain what? Jangling. Vain jangling. I like that. Vain jangling. Reminds me of change in your pocket. Man, jingling. A lot of churches are like that, man. They're just crazy. Some man, jingling. You want to stay steady? Jesus needs people who aren't vain janglers. Quote me. Desiring to be what? Teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. But we know the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers, murderers of mothers, manslayers. We're glad the law's there. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves of mankind, for men stealers, for liars, perjured persons, if there be any other such things contrary to sound doctrine, fill in the blank. According to the glorious what? Of the blessed God, say it with me, which was what? One more time. Which was what? To my trust. Now, there's a lot of Scripture that I'm not going to go all over all of it. Here's the point. We need people. Jesus needs people. I need church people. That will just absolutely believe God's Word, stand on God's Word, live God's Word out in your life, communicate God's Word with other people, Truth. Are you hearing me say? You can have the flopping like a chicken. I want the sound doctrine. Y'all hearing me or not? This world's hurting. They need the Lord. And we're all looking for a quick fix, ain't we? I mean, I like quick fixes. You give me one, I'll take it. But you know what? People's problems really need Jesus Christ, really needs the Word. I don't know. I'm at the place in my life now. I'm going to quit now, Raj. I'm at the place in my life. I'm 52, even though I know I don't look it. But anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. I always say that. But anyway, I'm just kidding. But anyway, uh, I'm at the place in my life now where I just absolutely know God loves me. He loves me. I even hear him sometimes, not all the time. Don't take this wrong. I'd hear him sometimes speak to my heart and say, I'm proud of you. It seemed like I always trying to measure up or something in my life. It's nice. Not that I've arrived. It's not about nothing. It's just about 
I've gone through lots of stuff, and he's always stood by me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Isn't that great? Sometimes you don't know the love of God until you've been, pers- been by- forsaken by folk. And know he's still there, and he didn't leave you. Have I lost you again? Say. I'm going to tell you something right now. The love of God beats any experience. Knowing God loves me, knowing I have Him in my heart beats any little church thing or any experience or any, something somebody makes up, some vain jangling. I love that. Knowing He loves me, He'll never leave me nor forsake me. Where did I hear that from? The what? The Word of God. Amen? Are you listening? Yes or no? See, for us that think we got to measure up, we think we keep, got to keep doing. Did you know you don't have to do a dime's worth of nothing and Jesus Christ loves you? That's beautiful, isn't it? Son? Come on. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning at the beautiful Lemon Bay Performing Arts Center, located on the campus of Lemon Bay High School at 2201 Placida Road in Inglewood, Florida. Our early worship service begins at 9 a.m. and the main worship service begins at 1030 a.m. Between these two worship services, we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you're looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would like to just pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fellowshipinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.